All right, I am uh, I'm employed by Bunomatic. I work for Bunomatic out of Springfield, Illinois. Sometimes people ask me why the name Bun, and that's because Mr. Bun and the rest of the family really like that name. So that's something that you all can identify with here. Uh, the the Bun family uh, started in with a company called Bun Capital Grocery, a food house in Springfield, Illinois, and their claim to fame is a re a receipt book where they sold groceries to Abraham Lincoln. Uh, that business has now been sold out to. Uh, a major, a major competitor in that there is no longer a Bun Capital, but Bunomatic that was started in 1957 when George Bun uh, actually cornered the coffee maker industry and uh, uh, came up with the, uh, the 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 fluted paper filter that came along, and so uh, uh, a long and successful history. I've been doing this 20 years. the The markets that I that I sell to would be uh, equipment dealers, and that could, could be you. You could buy a piece of equipment from Bun and resell it to one of your customers. Uh, I sell to coffee companies, and you're not a coffee company. Uh, you could be, somebody could just buy a box of coffee from you, but that's generally not what you do. Then I sell to the office coffee industry, and that's another animal where uh, you have an environment where an office uh, provides coffee at no charge to their employees, and then uh, there are small companies who service that. That's a very difficult uh, uh, business at times. And then finally, coffee service. And that's what you do. And coffee service means that you're servicing the whole coffee operation. You're selling them the coffee, you're providing the equipment, you're keeping the equipment uh, uh, at functioning, uh, often you're doing stirs and cups and sugars and creamers and that whole, you're doing the whole, the whole package. So it's, Im it's important to note that when you're looking at this that, that, that what you're selling is coffee service. And, and if I could chide anyone at times to get people that want to be in the coffee business, this gentleman here is in the coffee business. You're in the coffee service business. Okay, so you're selling the whole, you're selling the whole, the whole, the whole package. I'm going to try to keep an eye on the, on the clock so we don't, don't go as long as I normally do. The uh, coffee is hot now. Coffee's doing well. People are making a lot of money in coffee. In case you haven't heard, people like McDonald's and, uh, and Pilot Oil and, and Starbucks are just making uh, tremendous profits. On, on, on coffee. And so what I want you to think about is, is if your customers want to get in on this, how do they get in on this? Because there are people that are getting in their car, going this way, and they're turning, and they're going over here to this place to get their coffee. And whether it's McDonald's or Starbucks or pilot, whoever it is, but they're making this a destination. They could have kept driving down the road that way and stopped someplace else, but they chose a place to specifically go to get that coffee. So what we have to think about is how do we, how do we get that person to make that change? Okay, And there are some things we can do. We can do merchandising. You know, we can have balloons and clowns and dancing bears and signs and uh, and we can wrap the, the servers and we can put a backdrop and we can give it a fancy name and we, we can do all those things and all those things are good. That's all really, really good, but if the cup of coffee that you get doesn't really thrill you, then you that's one stop and you're not going to see those people again. So the merchandising package, branding, uh, having condiment stations and all those things, that's all really good. Another thing that you have to have is you have to have coffee there for the volume. Uh, this, a quick story, when I used to sell office equipment, I would go near my house to the, there was a five star, and by the time it was my turn in line after everybody and I got to the brewer that had the three glass pots, they were all empty and I had to leave 
and go down the road and find another place. So when I got this job, I sold them one of our big brewers, the duels that do the, the two gallon and a half and an extra gallon and a half for decaf. And they thought it would pay for itself in a year. I went and checked on them like, you know, six weeks later and they said it had paid for itself in three weeks. Just having the inventory on hand. You can't sell from an empty wagon and if somebody wants to be in the coffee business, they've got to have enough power and volume in their equipment to make the amount of coffee to meet the demand. Okay. Now I want to touch on what I think is the, the most important. I, I have given you all a handout on Bun Coffee Basics. If you could open it up and just briefly look at the at the middle page here, so it's going to be oriented like, like this, and you will see pictures of coffee that's been brewed, and there are pictures here at the top, and they're very simple. It just shows that at the beginning of the brew, the middle of the brew, and the end, the different strengths in the coffee. And if we had more time, we would actually do some of this and pull it out, but you see the picture. You can try that on your own on your own later. And as we're also going to learn in a minute, which should come as no surprise, that the first part, which has all that nice dark color, is the best part, okay? And then it's going to deteriorate. And also it's why it's a really bad idea, unless it's the boss, to when you start a brew and go up and put your cup there and steal all the beginning and then put the glass pot there. That's a really uh, bad habit to do. Uh, Again, but you have to be careful who you not not to do that. All right. The I want to I want you to to leave your open up to this chart. I know it's daunting. I know many of you haven't seen a chart like this since those dreadful days in math class and high school, and you're going, oh no, oh no. Okay, here we go. All right. To, to demonstrate the chart, uh, what do I have in my hand here? Right. That's right, that's right. Here's the orange, the virtual orange. See those smart guys there. I didn't prep them on that before we started. <laughs> okay, rather than make a mess here and bring in a real orange, I've got this orange here. And if I cut it and I take a cup and I squeeze that orange, that first squeeze is going to be some really good juice. If I squeeze it some more, that's going to be okay. But if I get the biggest feller in here and just have him just squeeze the daylights out of it, that last part is going to be bitter. It's not going to be the good juice. Part of the reason when you go in the grocery store, there's expensive juice and not expensive juice because they don't throw away that that's in the cheap stuff. And then you Okay, this all, and coffee is exactly the same way. If we take a small amount of coffee and put it in this basket and pour X amount of water in, the amount of water is a constant. In this brewer like this, it's a half, half gallon of water. We're pouring water through and through and through. We are squeezing and squeezing and squeezing that coffee. We're squeezing that orange. If we put more coffee in the basket, then, the, then relative to the amount of water, we are not squeezing it as hard because the water has to make contact with more coffee. Okay? It's just that simple. It is just the orange. It's just the orange. So the whole science of what we're trying to do is just how hard are we going to squeeze the orange? And this chart does make sense, and I'm going to help you. If you look across the bottom, you'll see numbers, and the shaded area here is noted as 18 to 22. Okay, Those are the magic numbers. If we want to make a good cup of coffee, we want to squeeze the orange hard enough, or the coffee hard enough, that we take 18 to 22 percent 
out of the coffee. So if we were to brew, and in the Bun Lab at our home office, uh, they'll test the hydration of the coffee before it's brewed, brew it, put the coffee into uh, 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 an oven, and dehydrate it back, and then weigh it, and actually weigh physically how much was taken out of that out of the coffee. You can also do it by measuring the dissolved solids that are in the finished product. So the the question. So we have. We have two things. We have how much coffee that we take out of the basket, okay? And that's the number on the bottom. We're going to take 18 to 22 percent out. That's why there's grounds left in here. So how much did we take out of this? We took 18 to 22 percent. All right. The next question is, and those people who are here for the last meeting, don't don't yell out. When you make a pot of coffee, approximately what percent of this pot is is coffee as opposed to water. Anyone want to throw a number out? Okay, that's fine. No one breaks. It's about 1%. So we're selling something that's that's 99% hot water, and that can get us into issues of water quality, but that explains the number up that uh, the left side of your chart. And that is what percentage of the finished product is coffee as opposed to water. If you look in the middle thing, the middle box, middle thing, sorry, ideal, that means that you would have between 1.15 and 1.35 percent of the finished product is coffee. So even in at the highest end of gourmet coffee, you're still limited there, but you're in this 18 to 22 percent. What the chart shows us is in order to get into that box, we have to be on one of the red lines. And if you notice that the red line, the smallest, and that's where the ounces are in your right-hand column, that the smallest number of ounces to get into ideal is three and a quarter. Okay. As we move down from there, anything below there, according to the Specialty Coffee Association, is weak, doesn't mean it's bad, just means it's weak. As long as we do 18 to 22 percent, it's a good cup of coffee. The problem that most of your accounts have is that they are using such a small amount of coffee that by definition they are in this lower right hand corner and all of their coffee is weak and bitter. And what happens is You've got them in a, somebody's got an ounce and a quarter, an ounce and a half. If you bump them up to 175, it's still weak and bitter, but it's just they've added so much of the bitter that they start going, ooh, this is strong. No, it's just you're finally tasting how bitter it is because you've squeezed that orange and squeezed that orange and squeezed that orange. The only way to get a good cup of coffee is to put more coffee in the basket. You put more coffee in the basket, you get the math right, you get the taste right, and then you can add that person who is driving down the road, and maybe they used to go there, but now they're going to come over here to your place because you've got a cup of coffee that they that they want to have. So the, the challenge is you have to have a customer who is motivated to sell more coffee. And if you have a customer that wants to sell more coffee, then you can answer that, that challenge by, by, by providing them with a better cup of coffee. One of, just one note before, at some time during, during the day, I have just come up and sampled these. You'll, you'll know which is which. They're the same coffee just brewed at very different strengths, okay? And you'll know which is which, and this is how I would recommend that you uh, present, if you have a customer that does want to sell more coffee, knows that the only way you're gonna do it is to have a bigger pack size, I would recommend brewing two pots of coffee for them 
one pot with their current, let's say, ounce and a half, and another pot where you put two bags in and brew it at three ounces. And every time I've ever done that, they, they taste that three ounce one, they go, wow, this tastes like coffee. This is good. But you've used their coffee so that the, the, the whole flavor profile is similar to them. It's not as drastic as bringing in some exotic Ethiopian blend, and then they're like, what's this? So uh, those are some ideas. That's the science. But that's everyone who's making huge sales is doing heavy pack sizes. Uh, you got Thornton's at three and a quarter, Starbucks three seven five, Pilot Oil's three and a quarter, uh, um, Duncan's three and a quarter, uh, Tim Hortons two and a half, uh, McDonald's can either be two and a quarter or two and a half, depending on uh, if they have a if they have an option. But but you get the point. Everyone who's really selling coffee now, everyone who's being successful is putting some coffee in the funnel. That's just there's, you know. Like I said before, you can only do so many balloons and clowns and stuff, but it, that, that's not going to get it. And it, 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 that, and then this philosophy, you don't carry over to all your other products. You know, you want to sell more hamburgers, you got to have a better hamburger. It's just the same thing. It's all, all basic. All right, quickly, because I've gone longer than I wanted. Some things for you to know on the, on the machines. This area up here. From many of your customers, you'll go in and it'll be disgustingly black. Every time you brew, the steam comes up, gets some of that gunk and brings it down the coffee, makes it taste terrible. That's why if you're ever doing a tasting, take your own brewer with you so it's nice and clean. General appearance, this is a spray head. It should be clean. You should have a good flow. You could take, you could hold the funnel down here and run this and make sure you had good flow so that the, these things get all limed up and gunked up. You can clean them. I, they didn't make it in time, but we have little tools you can going to be sent to you for cleaning these holes. You can use a paper clip effectively. This is a deliming spring. You're going to be getting one of these. If you have a glass pot brewer or a tea machine, then I would encourage you to use this. The big gallon and a half brewers, you can't. And I'm going to show you that I really did get the whole thing in there. I've got it all but just where my fingers are touching, okay? It really does go in. When you get to your customers, it won't because that tube is so lined up, it's going to take a tremendous amount of effort. But if you could help them out doing that, that would be wonderful. Make a pot of water to clean out what you did before you put your spray head back on. You're going to get one of these neat little tools. Again, this can clean the holes in the spray head. But on the bigger machines, the ones that brew into the gallon and a half, the big machines you have to use a little thing because there's actually a valve right above there. And if you put the deliming spring up, you'll, you'll break it. And then you'll just use this to take the spray head off and just clean this little tube there. So this is for the great big gallon app brewers. This is for the glass pot brewers and the iced tea machines. Very good. And I think I'm going to stop right there. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I That was a great presentation. And I think if you get one thing out of that for years people made fun out of made fun of gas stations for having bad coffee that was always a joke gas stations have bad coffee you can tell your breakfast restaurant customers who the first thing that people order when they go into a breakfast restaurant is their cup of coffee first thing they taste and probably the last thing that they taste is that cup of coffee there should probably be nothing more important than a break to a breakfast restaurant than the coffee you can tell your breakfast restaurant customers that gas stations are serving coffee twice as strong as that. You know, the, the laughing stock of the industry gas stations a much better cup of coffee than what most of your what your customers are. Uh, the, the pilot example was an excellent example of that. So I just wanted to quick Very emphasize good. that that Very was good. an excellent Very point good. that you made.